Uh, I wanted us to look at um, how we can be able to uh, configure, um, not configure it, but uh, uh, program the LCD so that you can be able to display something. And I think this is what you might have done also on your own, some of you. But uh, for those who have not managed, I think uh, we could be able to do it together today. And then you see how it comes about. So basically the LCD, um, if we have a look at it, huh? so for you to be able to get it, um, just type there LCD, then you will see this one appearing. And it's actually um, a 16 by 2. 16 by 2 means that it, it has 16 um, columns and two rows. Then it has some terminals here where we have the ground, uh, the power, uh, the contrast. This will be, of course, varying the contrast. I think it's usually connected to a potentiometer but in most cases we just ground it. Then the register uh, select. Uh, this will be for selection of register. I think for storage purposes, it's connected to one of the pins in Arduino. The read and write, enable, um, and also enable, but uh, read and write sometimes is not usually connected, um, which is grounded as well. And uh, the enable, of course, will be uh, enabling the operation of this system, I believe, and uh, it's connected also to one of the pins. In most cases, we are going to connect uh, uh, this to uh, to two. So register select to two, enable to three, and then DB zero all the way to DB seven. Those are the bits. Uh, remember when you are handling when you are handling uh, a character it usually represented in terms of binary. So whichever character that you have, which you're going to display on the keyboard, uh, it comes with the ASCII representation. And the ASCII in this case now is eight bits. Um, uh, please note that, uh, of course, the one which is very common is the seven bit, LC, uh, the seven uh, bit uh, ASCII, but eight bit is also used now. And uh, in most cases, you can also be able to send this twice. Uh, you divide this into two because they are eight bits then you are going to send four bits at a time that makes it a bit slow but it saves on the connections and the wiring so uh, we're going to do the four ones and we do db4 all the way to db7 um, then we connect that to four and seven on the arduino board i think i need to also put it there So that's our Arduino board. Uh, but you also need to work with a breadboard uh, because the actual one, in most cases, you require a breadboard to work with it. Uh, that's the actual LCD. And I will put it uh, uh, somewhere here. So that uh, you guys can be able to see on how we are going to connect it. So uh, then this is the LED terminals. Uh, remember the LCD itself is a liquid crystal. Uh, the liquid is um, of course on once uh, inside this system. And then uh, there's a backlight, a backlight which will enable you to see what it is displaying. That's how I think it's usually designed so that you can be able to see something. And uh, that LED, which you call the backlight, is got a cathode and an anode, of which you also need to connect the cathode to ground, the anode to five volts, but you need to connect them to uh, through a resistor uh, so that it does not burn or uh, does not get damaged. So in terms of connection, of course, uh, we know what happens with the uh, Arduino, and we can start the connection direct uh, straight away and I hope all of you, please, you are there with your Tinkercad also in your laptops so that we connect it together and we program it. In programming, it's usually very easy for it. 
So I would request that uh, you should be ready with your laptops also as we do this. And uh, just know that we are going to connect this to ground. And we change our color to black. And then I'll connect this to five volts, uh, which is red. Of course, when you see this is positive, this is negative. For the breadboard, you know what it stands for and how you're yeah, supposed to be handling that. Eh? Uh, and then, of course, the contrast, we agreed that we just ground it. Uh, though I think it's usually better you connect these terminals from uh, somewhere there. Uh, so that in the actual connection, you, uh, you you cannot manage to connect them in this form if you are dealing with the actual breadboard. Uh, they have to go to the different terminals uh, because they can't fit in one of these slots. So then uh, we say the contrast, we also ground it. And we have it as black. And then the register, we have agreed we connect it to pin two of the Arduino board. Then uh, the read and write, we ground that. And then the enable, we connect it to three. And then, of course, we have the DB4 all the way to DB7, which will be connected to 4 uh, and uh, up to 7. So this one goes to 4. And then this one goes to 5. Uh, that's DB5. Then uh, DB6 goes to six. Uh, DB7 goes to seven. And then of course, uh, the anode goes to five volts. And the cathode can just be connected through a resistor to ground. And as we agreed, this can also be in the positive side, no problem. We have it as 220 ohms because the calculations usually show that uh, 220 ohms is the best to use for uh, LEDs so that you don't damage them from our current. So then you connect your five volts. And it goes to uh, positive. So you can have it as red. And then you have your ground. Uh, which you also need to connect. Uh, it goes to ground in that form. You can change your color. And I think our connection is done. So the next thing to do is to program the device now. Uh, so that you can be able to operate. And of course, you go to code, and then you go to text, and then continue. And uh, you start the coding. So you can remove everything here so that you just uh, start a fresh um,
So usually, uh, you need to get the library, it's usually included. And uh, of course, you need to start with the hash, then you have include. And then of course, the those signs uh, from which you need to put um, a liquid, uh, liquid uh, dot uh, crystal. So because somebody has just done for us um, dot H everything and put it in a library somewhere. So you just need to pick it and uh, use it. And then of course the next one will be liquid uh, crystal. Um, LCD. And uh, it's basically the 16.2 that we are using. So you put here 16, then you put 2. That's the one we are using. And of course, you also need to set it up. To set it up, you do lcd.begin, just like we are doing the serial uh, dot begin. Uh, that's what you are going to do. Sorry, I think uh, this way you put the 16. Uh, that's why you put the 16 too. And here you need to put all the pins. Up here, please change to three, um, four, five, six, seven. Those pins that we used, they're the ones which go uh, at this point. Then of course you are setting up the 16 by two LCD. And uh, what you want to be done severally, you can actually be able to, uh, what you are looking, is basically the uh, printout and you do lcd dot uh, print. Uh, of course you need to start, in most cases you can start with setting the cursor because you cannot just print. Let's set the cursor. And we have lcd dot, uh, dot set cursor. And uh, we're setting it at the first uh, pixel. That is pixel zero, uh, zero. Please note that pixel zero, zero is the one which is at this point, uh, which is basically pixel zero. Then we have pixel 15. Then you can also have pixel zero to 15 of the second row. So uh, this would be in terms of uh, column and this is in terms of row. After setting the cursor in that manner, then you print. So you do LCD dot uh, print, and inside you can print. You can print our um, my name, so I can use the uh, those uh, commas double inverted commas, and inside I put. Um, uh, anything I want to print, maybe my name. Like that. And then we try to see whether it prints. In case there's a problem, we try to troubleshoot it because uh, we need to check an error card. Mm -hmm. Liquid dot crystal. So check what is the problem there. And for those of you who have done this before, you could also indicate what you are seeing there. So liquid dot crystal by 
Yeah, so it's supposed to be one word combined. making a lot of noise. You can put up your microphones. So usually it, uh, it gets the syntax. So you can see it, it lacks a bit. Huh? So we are not supposed to have put the dot there. That's what it recognizes in the library. Because depending on your library, you could change some of these things. So, and I think you can see it uh, displaying the name. And there are many, many other things that you can do with this. Apart from just displaying it the same way it is there, you could take, um, you would want to display in the second row. Uh, in the second row, so you need to put this one to be uh, one. That's the only time it can uh, print in the second uh, row. You can see that. And you want it to print uh, one step. So you stop. Then you can change this to one. In which case you realize that uh, it shifts one position to the right. And you are seeing that. And then the other thing maybe you might want to do is uh, so zero, uh, zero. Maybe you'd want to uh, print something um, you'd want to print two of them the two rows, how do you go about doing it? I can take this copy. Well, I want to print in the two rows. So I need to do exactly like this. <clears throat> the first one is zero, zero. So maybe I can say my name. And please know that when you are printing these characters, make sure that they don't go beyond uh, 16. That's the limitation for this. You cannot do up to 16. Uh, so plus 16 also, that will have a maximum of 32. Then of course, if you want to print in the second one, you change that to uh, one. So my name is, and then, Let's see how it prints out the two. So my name is, and you can see there's a, a slight lag. The lag is because you're using uh, two, you're using just four, half of the number of bits. That's four bits, zero of uh, uh, eight bits. And you can see you have done that. So if you would want to scroll, uh, maybe someone would want to scroll this. Um, this is what you'll do, you want to scroll. Uh, maybe we make it easier, uh, just deal with one. Um, let's deal with just one. one um, row so that you can be able to see what's happening. So and then maybe I put this one to be zero, but I want to scroll this. If I want to scroll to the left, then I can start, I do zero, I can do zero, okay. Maybe I can do like from uh, four. 
uh, zero. Then I print another one, three. So I do another one, three. But in most cases, before you print the next one, uh, you're going to do a delay. So like here, I can do a delay. So you can do a delay of maybe 1,000. And after the delay, you do LCD dot clear. So you clear your LCD. And uh, you do the same to the other one. So you can copy the all of that and place it here. If you were to uh, run it, you will be able to see uh, something happening. So you can see it actually scrolls. And I think if you had scroll it uh, further than that, uh, maybe copy everything here. And uh, this one you put it to be two, and then this one you put it to be one. Then you can see what happens. So if you have a longer name, which is not, uh, which you can't manage to display on that, uh, this is what you usually do. You actually scroll whatever you want to print on that screen. So then maybe Another thing that uh, one could want to know, if you want to print uh, uh, numbers, uh, you can actually do a printout here of a number. Like now you can take uh, number. Sometimes you could read a number from uh, some input, most probably. Um, Uh, most probably we are reading from a sensor. You can add to display the value. Please know that you just do lcd.print, then you put the value here and it will be able to print for you. Eh? So most probably if we can have like uh, uh, int. Mm, int just uh, I'm just putting it so int uh, a is equals to maybe like uh, three just a value so I can do lcd dot print also uh, that value lcd dot print brackets you just put a So then, of course, because it's going to, uh, it, it can do it at the last point, then you, you delay. That way it does not interfere, but you need to do it on a, on a particular point. So which means you require to also take the CASA uh, set. And you can put here, uh, maybe zero, and then I put one. I want to print it on the second row. Uh, then you clear screen. So let's see what it brings out. So 
you can see it prints the number three. In fact, if you want to do like a, a loop, you can also be able to loop. Like you do a loop uh, of from four to three or four to one. And uh, as it does that, you actually loop. It will be printing here three, okay, four, three, two, uh, one. You can actually be able to do that. Eh? So that's about the LCD itself. And there are many, many operations that you can do with it, but as much I think uh, we might require, this is what is very important uh, with it. Eh? So now, Uh, an exercise, you take temperature sensor, connect it here on the breadboard. Then I would want it to display the temperature here on the screen. Uh, apart from that, I would want it to display um, something else like um, if the temperature is uh, beyond a given level, then uh, it displays danger. If the temperature is within a set range, which is okay, uh, it will be able to uh, print. Uh, things are not working well, but uh, it's fine. And of course, the other one is when the temperature is just normal, maybe room temperature. Let's take room temperature and we take other uh, levels, three levels, and I see the displays accordingly from that. So it's an exercise I'm giving you uh, so that you can actually be able to do it. Uh, one of the temperature is too high, maybe from around uh, 60 onwards. Uh, it displays the temperature is too high. Maybe put off your phone. In fact, like now, a phone will display something like that. Yeah. Let me try to see whether I have something here which we can be able to use. Eh? Mm, as a message.